Governor Marco Rubio will introduce a bill today to help parents get paid family leave. It's called the Economic Security for New Parents Act. The measure would give parents two months of paid leave by pulling from their future Social Security benefits. Workers would then delay taking Social Security for three to six months when they retire. The bill would be the first new option for families since the Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993. That law gives employees unpaid leave for 12 weeks to care for a family member. Senator Marco Rubio is with us from Capitol Hill for an interview you'll see first only here on CBS this morning. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good morning. So how many people would this affect? Well, it depends how many people want to take the option. Let me start by explaining the why. Why are we doing this? Because I don't believe, there's nothing we can do for our children that's better than allowing their parents to spend more time and be more involved in their lives, especially from their early days. I think it's wrong, and we all seen this, people that work somewhere and that they have a child, and within two weeks of a cesarean section or three weeks of giving birth have to hurry back to work because they can't afford to miss one paycheck. In fact, it's startling how many parents, particularly first-time mothers and, and people who just have children in their family, go on public assistance because they lose their job and, or they can't draw a paycheck any longer. So what we are doing is we're giving people an option. No one's required to do this, but everyone will have the option of saying, I'm going to take some of my benefits. These are your benefits, not anybody <clears throat> else's, and take a portion of that earlier because I need that money now. Though People can do that now with 401ks. You should be able I, to do that with Social Senator, Security. Senator, I was fascinated to learn that it's estimated that just over one in ten workers receives paid family leave from their employers. That's, that's not a lot, and certainly pe people need paid family leave. Um, why, though, do you want it to come from the Social Security? security to pay for it. Well, well, I prefer it come from the private sector, but as you just said, only one out of ten have it. And, uh, and I hope that number will grow over the years. And by the way, the irony is the more money you make, the likely you are to have it. And the less money you make, the less likely you are to have it. So if you're making $300,000 a year at an investment bank, you probably have paid family leave. But if you're making $40,000 a year working for a small business who probably can't afford to provide it, you do not have it. As far as coming from there, if somebody has a better idea, we're open to it. If they have a better idea that doesn't raise taxes, we're all open for it. But I can tell you that this is a real problem. We cannot, we have to, if we are serious in this country about helping our children, it begins from the day they are born by allowing their parents to be involved in the early days of their lives, especially. And that should not be a bankruptcy inducing event. And this is one option that we think is pretty creative to allow people to take their money and instead of waiting 30 years to get some of it, take some of it earlier when they really need it. But Senator, isn't this really asking working class Americans to choose between retirement security and caring for a new child? No, ultimately right now they don't even have a choice at all of how they're going to pay for their bills at the front end. Most of, many people right now, if you have a child, your job is required to give you 12 weeks of paid leave, but they don't have to pay you. So you're basically going to go without any pay for four to eight weeks. Most people can't afford that. We have people going on public assistance. So this is just an option. No one is going to be forced to do this. Some people will decide they don't want to do it. It doesn't make sense for them. But it's an option that will be available for people that they don't have right now. Because as it stands today, if we do nothing, you're going to continue to see, as you've just said, 9 out of 10 workers will basically not draw any income during that period of time and, and causing real economic strain right now. Senator, President Trump tweeted yesterday that Attorney General Jeff Sessions should end the special counsel's Russia investigation. He's called it, again, a rigged witch hunt. Is that obstruction of justice? Well, I don't know what the legal definition of that would be with regards to tweets. I don't think that's ever been litigated. Here's the bottom line. I'm not going to spend my time here in the U.S. Senate waking up every morning and responding to some tweet every day. Okay, I know, you know, that's what you guys are paid to do, and that's fine if it's something that directive on public policy. But I'm going to spend my time in the U.S. Senate working on paid family leave. I'm going to spend my time in the U.S. Senate fighting against, uh, you know, the efforts of the Chinese to overtake us on the geopolitical stage. I'm going to spend my time fighting for the people of Florida and on issues that are important. And when something big comes up that needs to be addressed, we'll address it. My, view, my views of the Mueller investigation are clear. I think that he should be allowed to finish his work, that all the truth come out, and that the truth is going to be good for the president and good for America. And that remains my view. If the president has a different view, though certainly that's his right, and, and, uh, and you guys can ask him about it. You can ask the White House about it. All of our intelligence agencies have made clear that they believe that the Russians tried to interfere in our past election and that they are still trying to do. The director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, has warned about this interference. Um, but you voted against election security funding yesterday. Why? 
because we've already provided a ton of money on election security. Most of it hasn't even started getting paid yet. So it's not even, the states wouldn't even be able to spend that money. They wouldn't know what to spend it on. They've barely even begun to spend the money that was just given to them uh, a few months ago. So if more is needed next year, we'll provide more. But there, I can tell you, for example, the state of Florida initially wasn't even going to apply for the money available right now because they couldn't spend it between now and November. So the money that we've already appropriated is the money that was based on a professional assessment of what the needs were from a national level, and that money was appropriated. If an additional amount is necessary in the future, we will provide it. But there is no outcry from states saying they need more money. They haven't even begun to spend the money they have now. Most of them haven't even carried out an assessment of what they're going to need uh, over the next four to six months, much less begin to spend it. Well, that's if there's even more, more need scary. for it in the future, we'll do it. That's even well, more you know, scary. <laughs> well, because here's why. Every county is different. You know, yeah. elections in this country are not run by central yeah. organizations. Yeah. They're run at the county level. Sure. Some counties are further ahead than others. Some don't need any help. They've got it covered. Mm -hmm. Many others do not. And, uh, and they're going through the process of it. It's something to be concerned about, no doubt. But just throwing it, this is nothing but a stunt to be able to say, well, thank you for providing the money. Right. We're going to mm -hmm. file an amendment yeah. to provide more money right. to make it look like you don't care. All right. But Senator, it's not real. Senator Marco Rubio, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Th